In this video, we're going to cover how to get started with um, User Managed Access, or UMA, using the Fordrock Access Manager 7.0 release and a GitHub Fordrock open source project for a resource server. I'm looking at the uh, master branch for the project in GitHub here. We're going to follow the, uh, the steps that they talk about for getting it started. So let's go down to the, um, we need to clone the project first. So we'll do a git clone. And I'm in a temp folder here. Also what I have are a couple staging files. These files you'll need to get from Fordrock's backstage um, resource. They're the AM and the Amster utilities that are required to install the uh, Docker environment. So first thing we're going to do is do a git clone. And we get the environment. So we have a new directory. The next step we need to do is copy those two files, the AM7 to this location. inside the uh, checked out branch. So we'll just do copy AM to FDP that location. I'll go get the other one. And we'll do another copy. Emster FDP and paste that in. Okay, now we're going to kick off our Docker Compose. If we do a Docker PSMS A, I'm going running Docker container LS minus A, no containers, Docker image LS minus A. And you can see we have those three images. So let's go into the project we just checked out from GitHub. And we're going to run our build command. Let's go back to our web page. Uh, we got a couple setup steps. We need to add these two aliases to the local host and our Etsy host file. I already done that, but let's just take a look at them here. Let's do a more of Etsy hosts. And you can see I've already got them in there. Localhost has been updated. So the next step we need to do is do our Docker Compose up. We're in our folder. Paste that command in. And let it run. This will take about three or four minutes depending on your environment. That's what it takes here on my laptop. While we're waiting for this to build, uh, we will update our Postman collections. These Postman collections are provided with the project and we're going to use them to uh, demonstrate the two parties, the requesting party and the uh, resource owner. First thing we're going to do is import an environment. So go open, go import, and then we're going to import the resource owner. And we're going to import, uh, say replace it. I already had one in there, but we'll just say replace it. And we'll check the other one here. File, requesting party. Let's do import. Again, we'll tell to replace it just to make sure we're current. All right, we're going to set our environment to the UMA containers. And you see we have collections here for the resource owner, for authenticating, managing the resource, as well as a collection for the requesting party. Let's go see how our build is doing. 
what we're actually doing is we're going out and we're building um, four containers. The ones for the authorization server, which is Access Manager from Forge Rock, really 7.0. Another one is the resource server, which is another GitHub project. A content server that is another GitHub project. And we're also using MongoDB. What's happening now is we're actually building all the source code from those other projects. Um, there's a container that was set up to do a Maven checkout, build the code, save the war files, save the jar files, and then they'll actually be used in the final containers that are part of the whole Docker Compose environment. And looks like they're done. So now they're starting up. You'll see we've got different colors here. We've got the content server here in one color. We've got the database, MongoDB. We've got the resource server. And we've got the authorization server. And we just need to wait for the authorization server to be ready. And we'll be all set to test it. While we're waiting that to start up, we can go look at Docker Compose here. <clears throat> excuse me, Docker Desktop, and see what we've got running. So you see the images we've got. We go look at our containers. We've got our container running with all these individual containers. The database, authorization server, content server, and the resource server. We'll also go check out the MongoDB. We have our content server here, we have our resource server here, and there's a couple of databases in the resource server, and then there's one database in the content server. Looks good. We've got a server startup, so we're all set. Let's log into Forge Rock Access Manager. We log in as a default admin user. The passwords are on the wiki page for the project. And we're going to just take a couple of customizations that were added um, to the default install. We needed two OAuth clients. So we have one for the resource server, and that's been created here. We have another one for the requesting party application, and that's created here. We also needed some services configured. We needed the OAuth provider configured is there and we need the UMA provider which is configured. We also added two sample users. We added a Barb Jensen and a Danny Crane. Danny Crane's our resource owner and Barb Jensen is our requesting party user. We'll log in as those users later and uh, verify their UMA resources. We're going to open up our collection for the resource owner. First step is we need to authenticate. We have to authenticate to the authorization server. So we provide some credentials. We're going to validate, make sure that was good. We are logged in as dcrane. The next step here is we're going to create a default resource. In the body, we can take a look at what's going to be created. There's a few sections here. There's a meta section, a content section, and a regist register section. The meta is data that we're going to save about the resource that's being registered in the resource server. Content is what's the actual raw data we want associated with this resource. And the register is information of, that UMA needs as far as allowed scopes, any icons, and then there's policies as to who has access to what resource and what that uh, set of scopes are. So let's go and execute this one. We're going to hit send. And we get back at 201 created, so we're good to go. If you want to look at your headers here, you can see that um, in the location we get a full link back to the resource. We're going to run the search command, and we get back one result. Um, 
this created resource handle is going to be used for the remaining of the uh, test scenarios here in the collection. We can read the resource, go back and read it. And as you can see, we got our metadata, our content. It's been registered. We can individually look at just the metadata. Hit send here, we see our metadata. We can look at the um, content that's associated with the resource. We're going to hit read. We can hit send. We can change the content. Well, let's go look at it in MongoDB so you can see what's actually been stored in the back end here. So in our resource server, we have two things. First of all, we have credentials. We had a credential object created for Danny Crane. This is the protection API token used for UMA. This needs to be used for all operations that the owner has, has to perform in registering and managing resources. And then we actually have a resource database. Here's where we're storing metadata as well as links to the actual content. This content is stored externally. And we also store the handle to the registered resource that's in the Exis uh, manager, which is the authorization server. So if we look at this link here, we can follow it over the content server. And this is where we're actually storing the raw payload that's associated with that resource in the content server. All right, so let's go back and look at the registration. We can read the registration. Here we can see we've got allowed scopes. These are all the possible scopes that can be set on this resource. So we can make policies that contain all or a subset of these. We cannot use scopes that are not in the allowed set. So let's look at our policy. Our current policy is set to have permissions of B. Jensen, what B. Jensen can do, and what M. Yoshida can do, and Amy Adams. So we're good to go. We got resources that have been registered for uh, the owner, Danny Crane. And let's take a look at that inside of Access Manager. So if I log back in now as D. Crane, passwords are on the wiki page, and I go to my resources. You can see I have one resource. It's called Save. 456. Here's the users and what their permissions are for that resource. And we'll log in as B. Jensen. We go to resources. In this case, we say share with me, and we can see I have access, or sorry, not me. Um, we can see that uh, Barb Jensen has access to the save 456 resource. Okay, let's go back to Postman. And we're done with the resource owner for now. So we've created a resource, we've registered the resource, and we've set policy in the resource. And let's go to the other collection, and we're going to demonstrate the requesting party flow. Like the other one, we're going to start with a login. We need to authenticate to the authorization server. And we're going to validate our login, which is great. We're B. Jensen. And now we're going to actually perform the UMA flow. It's a five-step flow. The first thing we do is we make a request asking for the resource. We currently um, don't have an RPT, which is a requesting party token. So it creates a permission ticket for us here. With that permission ticket, we need to get an a claim token, but before we get a claim token, we need to go through an authorization code flow. So we go through the authorization code flow. With the authorization code, we're now going to get a claim token. Now that I have the claim token and I have the uh, permission ticket, I attempt to now go get the RPT. So we take those two pieces. Now we have our requesting party token and we resubmit our request to go get the resource. And if you notice, we get it back. Uh, here's our metadata about the resource. Here's the scopes. In this section, we show the request was for meta and content. 
the token supports meta and content, and the policy supports um, print meta and content. So you can see here in this example, we only asked for a subset of the scopes in this particular um, requesting party token. It says success, and we have the actual content. And there's information about the token as well. There's a few other examples here. You can use the share with me feature. You can see what resources have been shared with you. They're documented. Uh, please take a look at the um, readme file that's in the postman section. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.